Hey, it's Bill the Handyman up in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Today we're looking at a Sears stacker and it blew the belt. And so it actually may need what? This drum support bearing as well. We're going to take it apart and see. Normally if you uh, need a drum support, you will hear the screeching sound. And then, so... This one here, if you pull this back part off, and you can look and see in here, if your belt's on the idler pulley, if it's not on there, it fell off somewhere, then you need to get another belt. So, I actually ordered another belt on eBay, and we want to make sure that the belts are the same. Um, so, what I normally do is, I will take and flip the camera around, this is supposedly the belt. Looks like it could be the belt. So uh, what? 13450366600 cm. And what I normally do is I'll take the belt apart, and this is how you can do it. If you have uh, spare belts and you want to try and figure out if it's going to fit, you just basically match it up where the where it broke. And this one actually broke here. And sometimes you can tell by the belts if it's been overloaded or not. Usually it's, if, it's, if it's a clean snap, then the, the machine's been overloaded. Um, and you can look at the belt and see if it has checks in it. If you have checks in it, then it's, it was on its way south anyway. This one doesn't have any checks in it. And I don't know exactly why that would cause that problem. But basically you match it up and see if it's the same length. And this is actually... A little bit different so it's a little bit shorter but it might work I got this belt for this particular brand but you know who knows um, uh, this is Express Parts Direct is where I got the, uh, the belt from anyway we're gonna take it apart first thing we're gonna do is and I thought I had a knob for this because we're missing a knob here you have to take this top part off and then this one here we got the doors kind of tweaked so we have to reset the door Okay, in order to take the front panel off, you have to take the timer loose. There's a few screws on the bottom. I take this panel loose. We can look up in here. This thing here is pretty bad. Pretty linted up. I'll take a uh, brush and brush this out real good. But yeah, this could cause problems. Especially if it got wet. Anyway, these two Phillips here, they're kind of flat so that they don't interfere with this and you can see how this works you have to sort of like once you remove the screws you can push down on this and it'll pop out and so yeah we just take these screws here and there's three screws on the top and that front panel will come out you have to disconnect the, the door switch and um, we can take that front panel off okay so we got the front panel off so this front panel I've seen some of these where they don't actually put a light in there. Then they leave this part open. So if you don't have a light in here and that thing's open, you should take some metal tape, clean that off, fill that in. It will give you better suction. Uh, of course, you always want to check this stuff here. Make sure you're all clear. And uh, sometimes I'll put a few drops of TriFlow on the top of that. Um, so this one here basically you have to take like a large screwdriver or pry bar sometimes to pull this off I never take it off here. I mean theoretically. No, it's not a good idea um, I was to make sure that this is clean in here um, Lint tends to build up on these things. So we need to take a uh, like a screwdriver I'm going to show you briefly Basically, we just take a screwdriver and kind of pry up on this thing and it will come out eventually and so uh, yeah that's how we get that out I, uh, I want to pull it out and then make sure everything's clean and lubed inside there otherwise if you just need to put a belt on this as far as you need to go <clears throat> so uh, yeah so what's next we need to pull okay, got the barrel out so this is the main bearing here main bearing shaft and it's good um, Seems to have the center part worn out for some reason. The center's worn out. Uh, it's sharp there. But, uh, yeah, we have a lot of uh, lint built up in here. 
See, potential fire hazard. Yeah. Well, this is my new cure for cuts. This stuff here, it's like fine, fine powder. And it's sterilized. So that's my grafting for my cut action. There's my other battle scar from last time. There's a lot of sharp edges on this, what can I say? And so this one here, yeah, it's pretty well worn out. What happens is that this, this part here will start to hit this part here and squeak. <clears throat> and uh, you hear this loud, obnoxious squeaking sound before that bearing totally fails. It's designed that way to squeak a lot just before it fails. Don't push your luck. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, I just need to clean this out, clean this dust off this motor bit, and uh, see if that belt's going to fit, and pop it back together. Okay, so this thing actually has a little ball bearing in the center. See right there. When you take this loose, basically you have to kind of like check the back part too. Because this back part has, basically this is the, uh, the nut for the whole thing. Um, so this thing... Uh, you get to it from the top, hold this before it falls, but I think it's going to fall right here, so I'll just grab it when it falls. Okay, so that bit bushing, bearing, whatever, support bearing, bushing support, whatever you want to call it, that needs to be greased. So I have some white lithium grease, and there's a new one, and you can see the little ball bearing is in there. It's a good idea to have that ball bearing in there. You see all one. And you can see it's worn down a little bit. Back's worn out as well. And normally these don't have that much of an indentation on them. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how to fix this. Usually it's rounded. Uh, I may just fill it in with some epoxy. But you want to put a little bit of grease on this as well. And then pop her back together. We're good to go. Then I'll be working on this microwave. I picked up the scrap yard. Some people just throw these things away, you know? But I take pride in bringing this old stuff back to life. That's my problem. So if you need any help, you can contact me, 707-443-8347. I get phone advice for $39. Now, if your dryer has stopped heating, you might want to check this. This is the thermal uh, thermostat. This is the high limit thermostat. Basically, it tells the machine to shut down if you're running too hot. So that's always a good thing to check, first of all, if you don't have any heat. And thanks again for watching. Also, I sell a how to make money in the appliance repair business course. I take two, uh, two students per year. Uh, if you're interested, you can contact me regarding that as well. Thanks again. Okay, so this thing here, uh, I was a little concerned about it. But I'm not anymore. Because what I did is I put some JB Weld on this. Because that indentation on this, I'd never seen one uh, worn like this before. That big indentation. Um, it probably doesn't really affect it too much. Because um, everything rides on the center part right here. But the uh, thing is, it was like a bear to get out. Because that that ball bearing fell out and it was like in between the the mount and, and, and this thing. So, I'm just going to have to let this dry before I stick it in there. And otherwise, pop it back together, clean it up, pop it back together, and we're good to go.